All right, royalty. Royalty, uh, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, and uh, tell me about your family. You had both your parents when you were young? Um, I was adopted and I, um, I had a mom and a dad, yeah. But they had separated. So the, the, the family that adopted you broke up? Yeah, they separated and then I was like back and forth. And then in my teenage years, I kind of just was on my own. How would you describe your, your, your childhood? Um, it was lonely. Were you the only child? No, no. I was just, I, um, I kind of like programmed my mind into thinking that like it was like me against the world and stuff because of like a situation that had happened. And um, like the reason why I went to foster care and stuff was because my mom had left me on a porch. And um, it, it kind of just symbolized a lot for me. And I kind of used that situation a lot of times in my life, you know, and I just ha always had the mindset that, you know, no one loves me and I'll never love anybody and that's just the way it is. And I just now am changing that mindset. And how old are you now? I'm 18, yeah, I just turned 18 in April. And how, how so you've been working Figueroa Street? I work different places. I, I, I don't I don't just work fig. I honestly don't really like fig because it's a lot of gang banking and um, just a lot of fuckery. <laughs> Unnecessary. And you've been doing this for how long? I've been doing this for a year. So uh, you work with a pimp or by yourself? I prefer not to say. Okay. And uh yeah, yeah, so how much money do you, th you think you make on average? I yeah. prefer not to say. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Um, and you, so you're, you're living with your, do you have a boyfriend or somebody that you stay with? I prefer not to say that okay. either. Okay. <laughs> but um, I do have an apartment. Okay. Yeah, cool. I just moved inside of my apartment. So you, you left home back to your childhood. You, you left home at what age? I left home when I was about 15. 15. And where'd you go at 15? I had a boyfriend and um, he was like really, you know, like my boyfriend, I guess you could say. And I lived with him for three years. And then the day that I left him, I like started hoeing, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that cool. was in Kansas City? No, this was in San Diego. San Diego. I moved to San Diego when I was 12. With your family? With my mom. With your mom, okay. Mm hmm Do you remember the first time you did this? Uh, worked as a prostitute? Yeah. What was the, what was the first time like? It was, it was, it was funny <laughs> because um, I had just left like my little boyfriend's house and I was in downtown San Diego. And this guy, he kept like following me around and I was like, what the hell? Like, I'm not really feeling it. You know, like this is weird. Cause I was like 17, but I was used to guys doing that though because I had been approached to like engage in prostitution, but I had always tried to stay away from it because I was like, no, like it's not that serious for me. But that day I was like, you know, you ain't got that many options here. And so he was like, are you trying to make some money? And I was like, I'm not really like a prostitute like that. And he just kind of convinced me into doing it. So I did it. And then I just never stopped after that. It's fast money. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a real job, like a straight job, square job? I, I never had a real job. Did you have dreams as a kid of doing anything? Yes. Like what? Like I really like law and I like to read and stuff. Like I wanted to be like a teacher 
and a lawyer and a psychiatrist. I had a lot of dreams. Yeah. And you finished high school? No. I dropped out when I was like in 10th grade. Yeah. But I love school. School was fun. So did somebody, did, do you have friends that did this? That got you into, into this game? No, you know me? You figure it out. I'm around. very um, antisocial. Like seriously, <laughs> I just um, I just talk like to tricks. Like tricks are like the only people that I talk to outside of like my close circle, because that's just the way that I am. So everything that I learned is pretty much by myself. And so the money that you make, do you give to your Somebody? I prefer not to say. Okay. Yeah. You had any bad experiences out there? Uh huh. Like I've had what? some really bad experiences. <laughs> already? You're, you're young yet. I'm glad that I've had them though already because. What's happened? I've been raped and I've almost gotten killed. Um, and they happened like in the same week, which was like definitely a wake up call for me on a different. I mean, I wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna stop because I was like, you ain't got nothing else to do. But I was just like, the way that you do it, like, I'm very strict. I'm more strict now when but it comes. I interrupted you. You were saying you're glad that it happened. So, so now that you're more aware. Oh yeah, because um, the first time it was like a black guy, and I didn't want to date him because I I knew that you weren't supposed to. But he was just like really popping at it. And I was like, okay, fuck it. So I got in this car and it's fucked up because this was like when Black Lives Matter was popping. And I was like, you know, I really hope that, you know, you just take care of me, you know, like a good brother should. <laughs> and he like, um, just like pulled out a knife like to my throat and he was just like, yeah you know, get in the bag. And I was like, please don't kill me, you know? And he just did what he had to do. But the only thing that I can be thankful for is that he had the audacity to like put a condom on. That's the only thing that I could be thankful for. And I was just like crying and I was like, you know, this is like fucked up. And I guess he just came to his senses and he was like, just get the fuck out of my car. And then like a couple of days later, I had did this date with this Mexican man. And I was like very naive. And so I think I had like a little bit of my money like in the case of my phone. And this nigga took it and I was like, not feeling it. I was like, hold up, run that back though, because that's fucked up. And so I had tried to like manipulate him and be like, oh, I'm a minor. And if you don't give me this back. And I was just like really dumb. And he started driving me somewhere. And I was like really feeling myself and thinking that like he was gonna give me, he, cause he gave me my money back, but then I was like being greedy and I wanted more. And, um, he just like drove me to like the side of, I don't remember, but, and he just started like choking me out and like punching me. And it was like the worst thing that's ever happened to me. It was terrible. I thought I was really gonna die like as a prostitute at 18. I was like, this is some bullshit. And I was really praying and I was trying to use all the time physical force that I had and I was using my words. Like I was, you know, really saying some shit so I could get him to lay the fuck off. You know what I mean? And he finally did. Like he threw me out the car. And when he was done, like that shit looked like somebody like sliced my neck with a, like with a whole like butcher knife. But he really just choked me though. That's how crazy it was. And, um, it's crazy because I saw him again. Like on Long Beach, I saw him. And he thought I was a different girl. Oh, really? It was fucked up. I was like, wow. And you didn't go to the police the first time? No. 
I think I the because because of what you do, you can't. You feel like you can't do that. I mean, I just feel like they don't give a fuck, and um, yeah, <laughs> they don't give a fuck. And it's just like I didn't have a license plate or nothing. If I did, then I would have. You know, because I'm pretty sure he's done that to other girls, but I didn't have any of that information. So I was like, I'm gonna just thug it out. Yeah. Are, are drugs a part of your life? Yeah, I mean, not anymore, but I've had some problems ever since I was like young. I just always wanted to be like intoxicated in some way. But now I have somebody in my life that um, is like my anti-drug. So I know I don't need to do that shit anymore. Good, that's good for you. Yeah. Do you, do you still have contact with your family? Yeah, yeah. Do they know you're doing this? Mm-hmm. They do? Yeah, I just, I just like talked to my mom and my dad today. And I was like, yeah, I got pink hair. And they were like, oh, that's nice. They don't like it like at all, but they just are glad that I'm alive, I guess. Did those experiences that week where you, you know, may have escaped death, does that slow you down from doing it or make you re reconsider? Um, I mean, I don't really have that option to like just stop cold turkey. You need the money. Right. Um, I wish I would have, because when I was like young, this shit was fun and I could just come out and like, I was like really turned on by the fact that I could make hundreds of dollars like that young. You know, because that's not normal. And I just got addicted to it. And now I'm just like, it's just got bills to pay, you know, and all this, this and that. And it's kind of just like, it's really a job. Like, it's really a job. And I just wish that I would realize that. But it is what it is. <laughs> um. I'm sorry, I can edit this together. Uh, do you get depressed sometimes? Just get um, you down? Not really. No? I mean, not really, no. And you're in love right now? No. no. <laughs> I'm not in love. <laughs> I'm not in love. I just, um, I just have someone in my life who has showed me something that um, every other man hasn't. But it's not like, I mean, I guess you could say I am, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, it's just, it's just because he's um, a different type of breed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you find it difficult to live this lifestyle where Everybody around you is kind of up to no good. They're all doing something illegal or devious, you know. I mean, no, because like at the end of the day, like I'm like not, I like I'm a good girl. Like I'm not, like I like school and I like books and like by, all of that. But you're surrounded by guys cheating on their wives and, and yeah, and drug dealers. And but I mean, it doesn't it doesn't change who I am though. I don't really, like I said, I keep to myself. So all of that that goes on. You know, I don't really have nothing to do with that. Yeah. And so you don't feel like you can walk away? Um, not right now. No. No. Just for financial reasons? I mean, like, that and multiple other things. Like, this is just all that I know right now. And, yeah. You ever stand back and look at this lifestyle that you're living and go, man, this is dangerous. It's crazy. It's, you know, I could yeah, be in jail. Yeah, like there's been some fucked up shit happening lately. And I've been like, bro, I'm really not. <laughs> I'm really not feeling it. But it's just like, I don't know. I have to um, continue to stay strong and do what I got to do. Do you, have any, do you have any friends? Do you have any any good friends? No, I don't have any friends. No. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it hard too, right? 
No, it, it, that's like really how I naturally am. I'm just, um, I'm a loner, I guess you could say. I don't mind though. And you've been arrested? Um, I've gotten two tickets. They just give you tickets now? They don't really? Yeah, they gave me two tickets. Mm -hmm. I had, um, I went to like court or whatever. And it was like a DA recheck. It's just bullshit. And what do you think, like the, the men that pick you up, do you, do you, do you find that you're losing respect for men because of the kind of guys that, that are, you're interacting with? I mean, to me, I'm always like a trick is like a different type of breed to me. Like I don't categorize them as like a man. I know that's fucked up. No, it's probably not. But it's like, it's true because they really are like, they'll pick up anything and they really don't have like no sense of like, you know, like tricks are really just cockroaches to me, but they give me what I need and I survive that way. So it is what it is. But I mean, I don't really allow the fuckery that they be on to like, you know, be like, oh, men ain't shit because that's just them, you know? They're really like a whole nother different type of breed of men. <laughs> and, and, and the guys you pick up are, so you, you, you steer away from the black men? Oh yeah, I don't date black guys, I don't know. No, I'm good off of that. And so it's mostly Hispanics and... and yeah, but they'll kill you too, which is the <laughs> crazy all, part. I think they're all people. So, I mean, but it's just easier because the black guys, like, black guys, they just be doing the most. They can never just have a simple blowjob or fuck, like, ever. <laughs> and what do you get excited about? What makes you happy? Um, saying the people that I care about being happy. And what, do you have any goals? What would, you, what would you like to do with your life? In five, 10 years, where would you like to be? Um, Married with kids? No. Going to school? Going to school sounds great. Yeah, that sounds great. You're still very young yet, so. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's your family's reaction when you tell them what you're doing? You know what? Um, I never really got to tell them because I started doing it when I was a minor and I was always getting picked up like by the police. And you know, they're obviously gonna tell, like, you know, your daughter was like on the blade. <laughs> so my mom kind of figured out like from law enforcement. So I never really got to like break it down to her. And what's, what's the most important lesson you've learned in your life? You must have learned something in the street life. I mean, your intuition must be heightened just because the, you're interacting with strangers. It is. Um, Basically, just to like never be comfortable. Like, um, I'm just never comfortable with anybody. I have one person that like I can see, that I trust. A regular? And that's it. No, <laughs> no. Just one singular person. And it's just like everybody else, you know, I'm looking at you sideways because I don't know you. And even when I had met this person, I was looking at them sideways because that's just how I am naturally. And then with this street shit, it like heightened it to like a major level. But it protects my energy and it protects my heart. So I don't have a problem with it. All right, well, Royalty, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story with me. Okay. Very interesting. I wish you the best of luck. I hope you, what's your goal? Make a lot of money? Um. I mean, it's really not about the money to me. Like the money is always gonna come, you know. Do you, you find it fun? That's Mando. No, it's not fun to me. No? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.